It is. Yeah. Like if there's anything right now that we just discussed that you're like, I, you know, I get lost in some of this stuff and I've been doing it for a while. So that's fair. I think that, so I think the thing that I was probably a little lost on during that last conversation was, um, for like, um, I lost my job. Okay. Um, so, so for the wizard stuff, um, are we assuming like how how does how does the development of a form, which I guess like I'm, I will be eventually be diving into soon because I'm going to start working on like an appeals court um, document, but I haven't started yet because we're missing a template. But I'm sort of realizing how how do we expect users to be going about developing like templates and forms like this. I'm assuming that most people will have like an existing form, but they're not going to have like the sort of template that Quentin was using and importing directly into that. Um, because that was sort of, seems like it's a little bit of pivotal in terms of like, oh, what are they calling users and what are they calling descendants right. or so, um, and stuff like that. So I, the idea at this point in the project from what we've done so far is that uh, someone will have one of these forms. They will also have the checklists and procedure that's available on those Trello cards, on, on those Trello boards. Mm -hmm. And they will follow those through, which will mean labeling the form in a way that is useful, either whether it's DOCX or if it's a if it's a PDF, right? They will follow those instructions and end up with a form that can be run through the wizard, then run it through the wizard and end up with the starting point for their code, at which point they would continue to develop um, some of which is still guided through the um trello board guard trello. cards in that process it, it doesn't need to be trello it just it's that kind of um it's it, it's the process right the process we've developed gotcha okay so there's yeah so i guess whatever the exact process is which should take you through it and i mean we can talk gotcha. more about that but if but it's unclear to me if you want to talk through the process which it would yeah, actually yeah, be yeah, great yeah. to have your feedback about like whether the document, the current documentation, where it needs to be improved. So mm -hmm. that kind of would ruin that experiment. But yeah, no, that's fair. I feel like I feel like yeah, I, like as long as I know there is some sort of like guided process that people would go through to get to get like a docx or a PDF that has um, that has the actual variable names that get filled in later. Yeah, that's yeah. that's fine. Um, and sort of knowing that, know, know, knowing that there's some sort of process, I think I'd be fine jumping into that process. Um, I was just more confused because it seems like, yeah, there are very specific uses for user and descendants and stuff. And I was confused on how how people would be going into the wizard already having these very specific uses without sort of knowing how we're going to use them. Um, well, this like, is, like yeah. how, how we're having to deduce that from them, essentially. Um, yeah. yeah. No, it's, it's able to deduce. The part that, like, they, things like deced decedents, I don't remember what he called it. Uh, th things yeah. like people who we don't have on the list as people yet mm -hmm. they are it's someone makes them up and the and the and the thing is like um can you let people can you let developers create arbitrary individuals right mm -hmm. um which right now you can't and and like it's a possibility we've discussed before and i think it's a good one i i i, I yeah been totally into this idea mm -hmm. so Gotcha. Um, of, of making arbitrary people. There's also a discussion about making arbitrary attributes that we don't have in our stuff, but... Is that is that the whole roles part? Um, mm, well, no, like... no. Never no, mind, okay. that's a whole other discussion. Like, okay. at some yeah. point we said this is a good idea, then at some point we were like, mm, this isn't looking like a good idea, but um, I've seen some advantage to it more recently, and maybe that's something we can discuss sometime. Um, I probably need to write it down when it's in front of my face so that I can discuss it more effectively. Okay. Uh, Lily, I want to give you an opportunity to say if there's something that you, I, I'll, I'll come, I'll come back to you too, Bryce, because I'm not, but I just wanted to give Lily an opportunity to say, to like discuss, to say if she, she has something she's interested in bringing up. No, I'm, I'm all set. I'm all set. Thank you. 
Okay. Um, so Bryce, are you left with what, what questions? I mean, you're probably left with lots of questions, but are there any you okay. feel like you've are, you, you have articulated it to yourself in a way that they can come out into the world and, you know, mostly just, asked. I guess, yeah, like execution order. Cause we've been talking about this a few times. Um, yes. Yes, let's do execution order. <laughs> Finally, okay. So like, like I, because I've, I've, at least I've, I've, I like have figured out enough about Arca Simple to be like, okay, what well, is doing something with every question? But I don't know what's actually getting executed in all of the questions that are like code and where, where does code go? Like a code question or a code block go? Yep. Yeah, there's a lot. Yep. <laughs> So there is a lot, and it's really actually pretty darn complicated, but there are some, some simpler principles. Mm -hmm. So first of all, things that have a mandatory block, a, a mandatory specifier, mandatory colon true, and this mm -hmm. is recorded, and hopefully Quentin will put it up with the rest of the stuff, but um, yeah. um, that will be run. Uh, that doesn't determine the necessarily... Okay, it can be, uh, it, that will be run and the order in which it is run depends on other things. So if something is a mandatory block, then it will be run. Gotcha. If a variable is requested, so that is if docassemble hits something and, it's, and, and a variable that is, it does not know the definition for, it mm -hmm. will trigger whatever blocks it feels it has to in order to define that variable. That leads and, to a lot of interesting behavior. Yeah. So okay, two two questions there. By re variable is requested. Is the is everything before? So say like there's a code block and it has like two lines before, and then you use this variable that you haven't like requested. Are those two lines before actually executed, or is Docker symbol like doing nope, some meta? Executed. meta they are executed, okay. So, so in a block, doc assemble goes from top to bottom until it hits a variable that it does, doesn't know. So watch this gotcha. visually, because this helps a little bit. When it hits that variable, so it runs everything, then it hits a variable it doesn't know. Then it goes to the bottom of the document mm -hmm. and it searches each block, goes into each block and figures out where it can find that variable. Mm -hmm. Then it triggers that block. If it runs into another variable doesn't understand it then goes into the next block so you can it can create this chain and one of the things that i find challenging mm -hmm. about docassemble is managing this chain of dependencies basically mm -hmm. um and there are different ways to handle that now the thing is once it's found that variable it will come back to this original block and it will run it from top to bottom again so every time a, a variable gets defined, it also runs the block again. So if it's a code block, it'll run it from top to bottom again, which gets you into situations where you think you're only incrementing things once, but you're actually incrementing them for every undefined block, undefined variable you have in a block. I see. So it's making very strongly, like, this is like a functional, like this is like a, some sort of like functional programming thing where every time any any function you call needs to return the same stuff and shouldn't be like stateful because it can be called however many times it needs to yep. before it actually like the block fully executes and is never run again. Right. So like uh, Jonathan talks about this as item potency. Every block should be item potent. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. That is the right word, I believe. So, um, and I, I'm not there. There. There are. So, and to get a little bit more specific, undefined variables cause an exception is what happens and trigger, you know, this search. Um, anything that causes an exception will cause the block to be rerun. I mean, unless it's like, a, I guess, a terminating, I don't know exactly how to put that, but like an exception that terminates the process, right? Mm -hmm. So, but if you get an undefined name exception, and I think there are some other kinds of exceptions, um, then that will cause the block to be rerun. There is also an order of precedence. Mm -hmm. So, are, how familiar are you with CSS? 
Okay. And I can like read it, but I anytime I actually and I can I can read it and can write some, but like I would I would not try and do it okay. myself. Like yeah. <laughs> for sure. Important. <laughs> yep, for sure. Um so do you understand that like no, that's a terrible way of putting it, but there is a an order of precedence in CSS where, for example, a rule that's up here, a, a rule that's down here, lower in the file, takes precedent over a rule that's higher up if they have the same specifiers. So if one says yeah. div background color red and a, one down here says div background color blue, it'll be yeah. blue. Mm -hmm. Then it says if you get more specific. So if, if you have, you know, div background color blue down here, but up here you have div class foo background color red, mm -hmm. then it will be red because it is more specific for anything that has a class foo. So Docker yeah. symbol works in a similar way where something that is lower in the script will be um, given precedent over something higher up in the script because it works its way from bottom to top, mm -hmm. I think. Is that why? I don't know. Anyway, um, but if you get into things, there are ways in which you can specify things more specifically or less specifically so that you can make things overwritable. So you can make questions that overwrite each other based on how specific it is. So you can make questions that will ask about a, uh, you know, just anything, just an object. If an object is looking for this property, come mm -hmm. to this block. And then there'll be another one that says, if an individual object, so if an object that is an individual is looking for this property, come to this block, right? And then it can get much more specific. Mm -hmm. And it's all based on names. So it's all based on strings. Gotcha, which, okay. Which also means that things, the, 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 the names that strings have, the, the names that variable ha variables have matter very much. If you say users is a list of individuals, right? And then yeah. you say, uh, I don't know, suburbanites equals users or something. Mm -hmm. You can't then go look for suburbanite zero dot name dot first or something. Yes. Because that will not trigger the search because the name is not the correct name. I gotcha. That makes sense. Because you're not sense. using users, right? You mm -hmm. have to use users in order to get that, to trigger that behavior. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I feel like I've, I've run across somewhere else in the docs that, like, that can sometimes cause a bug because, like, it's now to fun. Maybe, maybe it's the other way around of, like, if you said, yeah, if you had something like suburbanites and you set it to users, then, like, none of the questions would get asked because that um, has already right. been set somehow. But, okay, I, I see what you mean, though. Yeah. So, so um, this is sometimes called an intrinsic name. So an issue, an issue with intrinsic names, or you know, using intrinsic names in some way or other. There's also this issue that sometimes you want a you want to, a variable that might or might not be defined, right? And you don't want to cause a search for it because if it's not defined in this particular circumstance and you don't want to trigger looking for it. Mm -hmm. um, like if you have a docx variable that should only be there if it exists, but shouldn't be asked for. For example, when we show a preview document, we don't have a different docx just to show a document without a signature. So we don't want two separate docx's, one that has users you know, dot signature on it mm -hmm. and, and one that doesn't, right? That's duplication, that's not maintainable. Um, Cause you don't wanna be, you know, maintaining two separate documents and updating them both everywhere. So, sense, yeah. so you want to have just one place and, and you wanna be able to say, if the, if the user's signature is defined, do put it here. And if it's not, don't put it here. And you'll make sure as the developer to, you, you will make sure that the signature, you know, is requested appropriately, right? And mm -hmm. so there are ways to do that. I, I just want to make you aware of them, aware of that difficulty, because that, that can sometimes come up. Mm -hmm. Once a variable sense. is defined, it is not looked for again, unless you use special ways to look for it. 
So it is not going to be redefined if you ask for it again. That whatever it is you think is going to happen is just going to be skipped right over. Mm -hmm. um, so if you want to redefine something, it has to be done in specific ways. Um, and sometimes, I mean, one way is to make a method or another way is to have something called a reconsider specifier in various places um, or defined by, like there are various ways to do it. Um, but just know that you're not gonna trigger a definition of a variable just by asking for it. Like once it's defined, it's not gonna be redefined. Um, and and what that means a lot of times is um, that 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 like trickles down in a in a myriad of ways. Um, for example, if you have the variable uh, like income in your PDF or something, mm -hmm. and the person goes to the review screen and they edit their income, that's not necessarily going to be reflected on that final preview again or form again, unless it gets recomputed, right? So you have to trigger a reconsideration of a value that has a chance of being recomputed or set, or you have to recompute the entire, the entire form, you know, like, like you just, you have to account for these things. And oh, what okay. that leads to is a lot of, um, execution in place. So instead of saying somewhere, you know, income equals, uh, you know, user input, mm -hmm. if, if income, if income doesn't equal not has income, then income equals user input else user income equals zero, right? So if you have that somewhere, it's not really and you go to your PDF and you just put in like, you know, this field should be income. Mm -hmm. It's not going to get recomputed every time. You're going to have to like do a reconsider here and you're going to have to add a lot of stuff in. If you instead mm -hmm. say, you, you know, do a one line or if statement that says, or a multi-line or one, if you, if you create it multi-line, mm -hmm. um, you know, if, if, if you create the if statement right there, then it will, you know, recalculate that every time. And so you're more likely to get, there's going to be less noise, less, you know, juggling that's going to go on. So as much as you can, you want to compute something in place if computing has to happen. And by in place, you mean like at the last possible place it needs to be computed? Wherever you need it. So instead of saying, you know, final yeah. income equals income or zero or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. You would say, this you know field here you know if income then income or zero else zero right i don't know if you're familiar with python enough to know that online or but yeah, yeah, yeah okay so like you would you would um it is we have found it useful to calculate in place rather than um making intermediate variables I'm, I'm probably only telling you the stuff that like I was confused about to begin with. So I don't know if this is like completely, uh, like I, I suspect there's a lot of stuff I'm not covering that is plenty confusing that I just happened to pick up on better. Yeah, it's honestly fine. Like I think like this, yeah, this is definitely stuff that I was a little confused about when I was like just doing, doing like Doodling the demo around. stuff that I was, I was able to do last week. I was like, I hadn't run into any bugs with any of it yet, besides for like the JavaScript thing, um, yeah. which I feel is like completely different. I have no idea how it's like, I'm, I'm like, at least after this, I sort of understand how the Python side works, but I am still a little confused on how the JavaScript side and the Python script, what's, what's executing when, when. So, like is, yeah. so, so the Python's always going to be executing on the server and the JavaScript's going to be executing in the client. So. And so this is, so any, any time a client is showing a page, it's doing the entire computation and then it's showing the um, page yeah, and then it's showing a page to the user. Okay. Right. So, so anything that changes when you're on a page, like anything that visually changes, like it's hidden, it's shown, it's, you mm -hmm. know, et cetera, et cetera. 
that's happening in JavaScript. So for example, for show ifs, sometimes there's like crazy stuff you have to do in order to be able to use variables that are not in, you know, in present in the question or when you, or crazy things you have to do to use variables that are in the question, right? Because then you have to deal with them right there in the, in the, on the client's page. So. I see. Okay. Right. I'm starting to understand your, your dis distrust of show ifs now. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, there's, <laughs> there's that, 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 that actual, the distrust of show ifs there was actually, is actually more to do with the fact that when you start using show ifs, you have to have the picture of the interview in your mind very well, because if you later request that variable and it's only in a show if, then, mm -hmm. the, then DocAssemble will keep coming back to that question. It won't be able to leave it because it says, this gets defined here. This is the place it gets defined. Answer this, right? But the user did not reveal the question that answered it and nor should they. Uh, and so uh, it never okay. gets an answer, right? So when you start playing around with show ifs, you're also playing with fire. I don't know, you're, 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 you're putting yourself in a position where if you lose track of, um, um, uh, of what you have defined and where you have defined it and, and you don't do the juggling act well, you know, then mm -hmm. you're going to end up with what I call infinite loops, though I'm sure everybody else finds that annoying because that's not like, you know. A, a, it's like an infinite user loop or something. Yeah, something yeah. like that. Like, you know, but you know, you just click there, you can click there forever, however much you want, but you're never gonna move on to the next question. So um, that is another, that, that is less a JavaScript versus Python and more just of a execution order thing again, which gotcha. okay. will get you every time. But um, I mean, it allows you to do some things that make it very easy to get up and running um, in DocAssemble and stuff like that. So there's a lot less well, in some in some ways, in some important ways that are useful to people writing these kinds of things, less boilerplate, less whatever. When you start getting detailed, it starts getting complicated again, right? When you start wanting to do specific things that, yeah. but um, but there are downsides, like with everything. That makes sense. Um, so, do you think I think does that that sort of explains at least all this weirdness with execution order? That the general reason I feel I've seen like. Um, most people end up just defining um, like interview order in the first place of they'll have something like at the very beginning it'll be like a mandatory with like a code block that is just like name of a variable name of a variable like if something ask this other name variable like a very very high level sketch of the interview yep and and, then... and also just so you know if you if you're including something in an if statement like mm -hmm. if has income you don't have to say has income and then if has income. If has income triggers has income being asked. Oh, so you don't have to be like, if it's not none or something. You don't right. have to ask for it before you, I mean, you can say if it's not none, but I just, you can ask for it right in the if statement. There doesn't mm. need to be any like boilerplate. Oh, I, oh, I okay. ask for the variable and then I use it in an if statement. That doesn't have to happen. You just you just use it in the if statement and it you know automatically goes looking for gotcha, whatever gotcha. it is. That, so that makes sense. Shoot, I have to check something. Uh yeah. Okay, okay. I'm still okay. As you say, if, if anyone has to hop off. Um, yeah, okay. yeah. I just yeah, I'm not good at being like very aware of time. So That's fair. um Cool. That makes things make a lot more sense now. I think um, in terms of just like, oh, okay, like, I there's told something you, right? happening. On, yeah, no, there's something happening order. under the hood, but I don't know what exactly it is. Um, yeah, yeah, um, cool. okay. yeah. Maybe you'll catch on to it faster. It was a nice. It's it there. It, there are ways in which it'll hit you as you go along. That goes, oh, of course, but mm -hmm. it's not something I anticipated, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank it's you a very starter. Much. Um, it's, yes, it's, yeah, it's a it's a fire. I don't know. There was an analogy I was gonna make, but I don't remember. 
the metaphor. Okay, so cool. Um, Thanks, Michelle. Yeah, um, you're welcome. And if you want to do like a study session sometime, I'm up for it. I like the next two days are going to be a bit tight, but mm -hmm. uh, we can probably get something in or even, you know, or something. Yeah, that's going to be good. Yeah. Well, let me know. I'll do. Okay. Cool. And Lily. Hello, I forgot you were there. <laughs> You're so uh, that's okay. That's okay. Um, Good to um, be. I mean, do you if if you have questions about that too, I'm I'm happy to tell you what I know. Again, like I'm also a human, and I may be wrong about things. So. <laughs> Um, no, I think you did a good job. Yeah, I, I went through a lot of those <laughs> try yeah, and error <laughs> process. Yeah, uh, and I, I remember one of those was the, the, the infinite loop. Yeah. It's, uh, it's like when I was trying to do some like, um, what is it? If you, like, if you want to repeat a question, uh, what is it called? Like a DA list kind of variable. Uh -huh. And. Uh, if the order, if the, the question, I, I had a complicated interview that it's, it's asking, like, okay, for example, how many properties do you own? So you, you can get it to answer it over and over. You have five houses, for example, then you get to answer that same question over and over, but with different information, of course. Mm -hmm. But in, in the process, process of bringing up those questions for the five properties the, the order is very important and sometimes you get so whack that it yeah. comes up with this infinite loop thing it yeah it can drive you crazy and especially especially when like people set up questions to be asked in a mandatory way so they put mandatory on questions and then they reference previous questions and other questions like like they reference the username before asking for the username but in order to get the username you also have to ask this question like you know that's hard for, for folks to that's why i never do mandatory question blocks i mean you, we're talking about different things but like it just bringing to mind other other situations i've run into yeah yeah i think I, I, I think jonathan actually also suggested that if you really you, you you know programming you understand programming it's better to have a code block that controls the flow of your questions because if you don't do it the um, document symbol will do it for you it will arrange the order for you but it's not always the way you want it so if you yeah. can control through a code block that's definitely the, the yeah. way to go yeah, I, I mean, if you're if you're happy to be kind of flexible about how your questions are asked and in what order, and it's a fairly you know simple situation, then I think yeah, you can like let let Doc Assemble do the the legwork for you, just when you get like when you want a specific question at a specific right, exactly. time. <laughs> exactly. If you yeah. want to be that picky about it, then you know. Um, or if, you know, things start getting not asked or asked when you don't want them asked. Yep. Then it gets, yeah, exactly. Did you want to talk at all about, um, or we can arrange another time to talk about testing and, and how it might fit into that chart that, 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 um, kind of skeleton and, and architecture of the project that you outlined? Yeah, I think I I don't know if if now is a good time, but I do think that is a com important com component for the system. Okay. Um, and right now, I I really don't know how in practice it has been going for the other people when they do the uh, create the, their interview. Is there a standard all. way or no? Right no. now, right now, the standard way is I experiment with your repository. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like, you know, make me an admin on your repository so I can start experimenting with it, um, which is revealing a lot of really interesting stuff. But uh, the, the, the standard way of interacting with it that I've formulated so far, I do have uh, plans for that. And you, you said now is not the time, so that's totally okay. But, uh, but there are 
so there is not documentation out there right now or like a kind of standard process out there right now that people have been using, but I do have a standard process that I believe uh, can be useful. So I would love input on it. That's again, kind of the, one of the things I wanna talk about maybe next week about um, how, how uh, testing can be integrated and what would be useful to people, like what, what people are looking for. Yeah, testing. I remember a while ago you you talked to me about uh, this this unit test thing that you said uh, you you learned it or you, you created it with the Code for Boston team mm -hmm. that then you were trying oh. to see how you can implement that with the assembly line in a standard way that people don't have to like make a copy of those code they can just somehow go through a process similar to the uh, like a wizard that yeah so is this the same thing you're talking about or something different? yeah i believe it is i believe okay. it is this is the uh um and what's happening right now is a repository that can give you give your project all the files it needs in order to be able to be able to write tests even in GitHub, like you could just write them in GitHub and run them. And um, it, it, it's harder to develop in GitHub just because like, there's not as much information you can get out of there. Um, right, right. It's not an interface for input. Now, how, how about, is it a good time now that it gave us a demo? Oh, sure. Uh, let me let me think if there's something that I can demo on that won't take forever. Um, I can demo on one of the one or two of the the made tests. Okay. So yeah, there's time. Okay. Um, what am I gonna share? I'm gonna let me actually let me set the environment variables ahead of time so that I don't have to I'm not gonna put my password on the video. Um, That's definitely a good idea. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, that would be a great idea, right? Um, and I think what branch am I in? It status. Out. Out. Good branch. Hang on. So while that's installing, I will. We'll see if it, we'll see how it works out because um, like this is in the middle of development. Wait, why is package uh, something still on sign out? Okay, good. Hmm, six four. Let me see what version this is. Um, interesting. Okay, so let's try this, npm publish, talk amongst yourselves, feel free. We'll see if it works because some of these things, um, or maybe I'll just go back to main. How about that? I mean, sorry. If you need, you need to 
to do preparation first, and then we can wait until next week where you do a demo, then we discuss it maybe. But I'm so excited um, now. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. I, I, I just don't want to put the pressure no, on you. No worries. No worries. So I think this will work. I, I'm going to check the package real quick. I think this should work. Um, all right, cool. So what I'm going to show you is really exciting. <laughs> it's a terminal window. Everyone, everyone who knows anything will know that that is the most exciting screen you can possibly get. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, first of all, npm install because the new, let me make sure that it's the right. You know what? I'm going to share my whole screen because it's going to be too much of a mess otherwise, but no judging, no judgment. Um, where are we? I have to hide this because it's impossible to, to see anything. So this is what a test looks like. This is what a set of tests look like. It's feature, the made tests, um, this is a scenario the user's court date has passed. This is a scenario that user has a federal mortgage. I'm gonna I think I'm gonna, oh, there's a nice short one. So I'm gonna comment out most of the tests. So oh, those lines, the did, did you there. type them or did you copy it somehow from the interview itself? Um, so these variables I got from the variable, from the interview itself. So the IDs, right? The ID for the questions. It says, given I start the interview at eviction. So this is eviction.yaml at the location that I have specified, right? The, the, inter, the, the playground that I've specified. When I tap to continue, then the question ID should be who is using. I can, so in other words, it's not auto-generated, the code? No, the okay. tests are not auto-generated. And there's an argument for doing randomized tests, but that will take a lot of working out. So um, tap to continue, blah, blah, blah. When I set the var person answering to tenant, or when I tap the var, where's there? Tap to continue, I tap, tap, tap tap the checkbox var survey user. Um, those are the two kind of main things that I'm gonna have to create a, when I set the var for checkboxes and radio buttons as well. I think we'll, that'll be half, how it has to be because a lot of things that I can tell you someday that will be super exciting, I'm sure. Anyway, so in my environment variable, I specify languages. I specify a variable called extra, languages equals and then like is then how do i do the tilde yo and stuff like that um and here and i believe we're going to get some failures so that'll be interesting to see too so let me get rid of these failures which are ignored but they show up as artifacts in github if that means anything to anybody um, so we're going to do npm run langs and may or may, oh, uh, control C actually npm run take down, take us another couple minutes, but this will make sure that it doesn't fail halfway through for no good reason, just for good reasons. <laughs> do those errors? Are just like just like screenshots of when the test fails or like the yep. failure happens. Yep. So and I also have ways to take screenshots um, proactively as a developer, so you can examine the situation a bit better, set up more easily. Um, Um, keeping these separate, like projects, like up to date with each other and stuff is a bit, 
crazy. It's not what my brain is made for anyway. So npm run langs. So now we'll see it invisibly go through. I probably won't take you all the way through the tests. I'll probably, you know, stop after a while. Yeah, that's fine. We just want to get a, a, a flavor. And what I can do also is I can show you um, what the tests look like. Like I can show you it doing the things it's doing. I can show you it more explicitly, which I might do in a, in a moment. So this is what it looks like. And then sometimes it will have failures and sometimes it will spend ages downloading something and it will do them in these various languages that have been generated. Um, I think Portuguese and Tiangvet, Tiangvit, I'm not, I don't know that pronunciation, but um, they don't, um, they don't uh, pass because of defaults that have not been set in them. And we're working on how to make defaults not cause failure. So uh, we'll see how that goes. You know what, this is too long. I'm gonna show you, uh, I'm gonna pause sharing for a second. Anyway, that's how it looks like when it's not fancy. You can't see my screen, right? Can nope. you see my screen? It okay. Is. Well, we'll wait. Sorry, we, we, we still can't see your screen. I don't know if it's paused or anything. You can still see my screen, but nothing's changing on it? Right. Yes. Oh, perfect. Good. So I'm going to set debug to true, and I will resume. Uh, not, I have to be off of this file if I don't want to show my passwords. Hmm. Um, and share. I will run it now, and I'll probably end up stopping it early too, but this you can see it doing its thing. Oh, nice. Okay. That's nice. So this is the kind of stuff that it's doing in the background along with a couple other Mm -hmm. small various various things that it's detecting about the page and stuff I, I will say the dom for finding all the various fields is a bit entertaining so um, but you can also make it wait for a certain amount of time if you're having trouble with race conditions in a particular spot which I just cannot account for all the race conditions. So um, it just doesn't, um, there are some situations, I've run into situations where like it will try to take the next step before the next page has loaded. And like I found it in a very specific spot. So there's something different about the code there that is making it think that the navigation has ended when it actually hasn't. And right now it uh, is downloading or has downloaded eviction forms.zip and it waits till that download is complete before moving on, which usually takes a while. So, and then we'll see it probably Spanish next. Um, great. Now, if, if, if it fails, does, does it give you a list of the problems? So it gives you the error message and I've built in some error messages custom that I think are more useful than just thing timed out and, you know, expected, <laughs> you know, false to be true. It's like, <laughs> all right, thanks. Um, but it also takes a screenshot, which I think can be very helpful. And sometimes it's not, right? So, so there's some development that a, a kind of person new to this kind of stuff can do this way and could do straight on GitHub. And there's some stuff that they, that would be more challenging. So I'm not sure I, since I haven't had anybody to, of, of that audience to try it out, I don't know what that would look like for someone, but um, I have my, my concerns. Um, but at least writing it locally is a bit easier. And there are scripts that run it fairly seamlessly there's a you know how i did take set up and take down and stuff like that earlier 
Um, there's a script that you can just do npm run local and it'll do this setup and take down for you. It's just that when I'm running a bunch of local tests, I don't want to always, what it does is it opens the playground, it creates a new project, it pulls from the branch that you specify, um, and then it, um, is this where languages weren't implemented yet? Yeah, I think it's probably not implemented correctly yet. So that's not that's okay. You don't, you don't exciting, have to but finish. yeah, no worries. Um, oh no, I see it's running other tests. That's fine. So anyway, um, so the, so there are things that are like, I, I, like, I don't have to do a bunch of things every time just cause I'm demoing. It doesn't mean that that's the way that it has to be run every time. Mm -hmm. But when you do a bunch of languages, you know, you imagine like that test grows longer and longer. So in a in something I'm developing now, you can choose to just run a language that you choose, or you can choose to run no extra languages, stuff like that. Um, though I don't think it's the most friendly to beginners, but I have to encounter some beginners and see what is unfriendly to them so that I can make it more friendly. Anyway. Great. Thank you. That is the world. Nice to Great world. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, you know, one of the things is for an interview like made, like plotting out all the different scenarios is a bit, you know, that would take some files and that would take a fair amount of um, like uh, time, especially to run in all the languages. And it would take um a fair amount of time to download all the files right now it doesn't compare pdfs it just downloads them so you can see see like but it has the name of the test so you will know what test this file has been downloaded from and you'll be able to say yes this is the correct output or no this isn't as a human looking at it but it doesn't yet compare pdfs in the future if it does you could put in a pdf and say these two things should look the same right so when you run this test this should look like the other one that I've provided. Right, yeah, that would be ideal. And that would be ideal, but it is, there is so much to develop right now that, um, yeah, it's not, it's not there yet. Anyway, um, and it'll run automatically in GitHub or you can manually trigger it to run on a branch, which I can show you too, but I don't know if that'll mean anything. Oh yeah, so so you're saying the the, the coders don't need to go go to that terminal thing to do it. Uh, actually, I can show you right now on my maid. So you're going to see a lot of errors right now. That is actually intentional because I'm I ha I'm testing logging errors appropriately and and getting the right artifacts for errors. So just gonna say as a preface, it's everything is supposed to be erroring. Oh, that's not what I mean. Okay, not end meeting for all. Um, so this is a test that got, this is a test that got run when I pushed a branch up. So you can see um, it's, this is the job, it has all this stuff. What we really care about is run langs, which will be called run test in the future to make it a bit easier to read. And it's failing in all the ways I was, I was hoping it would fail. Um, and this is basically what you'd have seen in the, um, um, is it failing in the ways I hoped it would fail? No, not quite. So uh, I may have to rerun those, but the, the uh, what was I saying? Don't remember. But so the report is here. And so it says timed out, which basically means it couldn't even go to the interview file. Probably there was some kind of conflict where, yeah, let me see if, if there's something in run setup. Yeah, something happened in run setup that didn't work which means that something conflicted, but that's okay. If I run it again, if I take down everything and run it again, I'm sure it'll be fine. 
So another way you can do it is you can go to actions and you can say, test the interview. You can do run workflow on whatever branch you want. Oh, okay. And then you can say, span. That is nice. And you can run a workflow. This will also cause errors. I shouldn't have done that. Anyway, whatever. <laughs> uh, because the file names are supposed to have appropriate file names. But you can see here there is an artifact, which is errors, which is a screenshot of what the page looked like when it aired. Uh, I mean, all of them. I mean, if you download it, it'll be all of them. So. Um, and I can share that to members. It takes a screenshot of the whole page. So, um, so new share. Oh, I have to like, how do I escape out of here? Um, new share. There we go. So this is one of the pages. This is another. In this, this just means to me that like it couldn't find it at all, which means that probably I went to my playground and like messed it up somehow. Like like I went and created a project and it was busy trying to be me creating a different project and so it didn't like it. But nice, nice. That's a lot of work. <laughs> that is. Thank you. <laughs> gorgeous. Most of the work was done by other people, but um, meaning like people who made libraries like Puppeteer and Cucumber and all that kind of stuff, but a fair amount of work for me too. So I'm willing to take some credit for that. Yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah, I think the examinability is a real issue that I don't know how to get past yet. Um, so I really wonder if it is going to be editable in GitHub. That's my big questions that I want to find out. But there are other questions like a situation that Quentin and I recently ran into um, where the, lang the defaults of the languages were the translators had ruined the defaults because they translated them. So they were no longer defaults in DocAssemble in the interview. So um, that uh, made them break despite the fact that defaults are not like a breaking feature really. Like if the defaults don't show up, the user can still answer the questions, et cetera, et cetera. So that brings up a whole set of questions about like, when defaults should and shouldn't be breaking and stuff. Anyway, but that's stuff for next week because I got to go soon anyway, too. I got to show it off to some people. It was very nice. I'm sorry. It was probably very, very boring, but I'm very fascinated about it right now. No, I'm, a, I'm actually super interested in this stuff. And this does make a lot of the stuff you were talking about last week make, make sense. So yes, yeah, it was gibber I'm sure it's gibberish to almost everyone means nothing um thank you and no at the end of the day this is going to be an important component because it will save so much manual work yeah right now it's in a development stage so some of the pieces i i don't want to talk too much maybe since we're going to have a discussion next week, but I, I if you want to write down there, some of your thoughts, just so you uh, don't forget them, so you can give them to me because I do want to hear them. Um, but yeah, yeah, there's definitely work, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's I mean, my, my my first thought is that the code where you show, you show the the lines of code where you have variables, you say mm -hmm. you, you like almost manually you put into. If we can somehow automate that so that oh, that would be in. fantastic but... yeah so so that's the first direction i'm thinking that could possibly if we can automate that a, a lot of people will be willing to use it 
if you are asking them to do them manually, they probably say, oh my gosh, that looks so much work that I don't want to do. <laughs> yeah, well, this right now, as I see it, is for like, you have like 10 or 12 cases, scenarios, that is, that you want to make sure they don't break, right? Or you have a very small interview that only has 10 or 12 scenarios. Um, then writing scenarios would be mo most useful. But if you want to discuss the, the thing, the, the, what you described is very intriguing, but discussing actually how that behavior would happen is, is kind of the meat of it, like figuring out, all right, so people list variables and values, like what does the code do with that, right? Yeah. Because yeah. they could appear on different pages. So does it, yeah, and we could discuss that. But, um, um, and, that, and that certainly would be an interesting way to format cucumber tests. Um, but I, 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 I think discussing the implementation of that is more useful than discussing it as a concept because oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. the implementation is where it gets not yeah. really. But, but, but we start with the concept, right? First of all, so like, 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 okay, is that a valid concept? Is that a useful concept? Yeah, 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 totally. It's an interesting idea. I hadn't thought of just variable to value. Would it be able to, hmm because it's got the hash. Now, now variables that are made, uh, like when you make choices and you don't put a, you don't map a variable name to the choice. Like for example, if you put choice, I accept, I, I don't accept, right? And you don't do colon the value, right? If you don't do a colon, if you just use that text, the label text as the value, um, that, is, that cannot be language agnostic as it is um, because it will get the value that is is that the label has will get translated into other languages when they get translated yeah definitely there's a lot of uh, discussions we could uh, make uh, down the road but right now i think i'm getting a little hungry <laughs> yes all right i had my lunch while you all were I don't know, probably while I was discussing too. I don't know, I'm not very shy about eating on Zoom. Um, okay, thanks everybody. Well, thank you. This is very interesting. Thank you, Jerry. thank you. And um, see you, uh, so so yeah, so think maybe thinking about where it fits into the chart was the whole, was, was part of the point of that. Okay. I guess I got right. distracted. And so we didn't get to talk about that, but that's okay. Um, all right, so maybe next week or, you know, during the week or whatever. Yeah. All right. Bye.